This is Spotlight, a biographical series that features people who've attained significant success in their chosen field. He, for a long time, served in the defunct provincial administration, rising to the position of provincial commissioner, was Nairobi and Nyanza provincial commissioner in the 90s, and later chaired the national campaign against drug abuse. Founded. Actually founded. Uh, the National Campaign Against Drug, Drug Abuse in Nakata is currently charged with the responsibility of creating a security conscious nation via Know Your Neighbor, better known as Nyumbakumi. Usalama Msingi. Right. Nyumbakumi Usalama Msingi. Nyumbakumi us- Usalama wa Msingi. Usalama wa Msingi. Right. Mr. Joseph Kagudi is on Spotlight this morning. Mr. Kagudi, we will get into details of what I just said later. But let's begin because. Spotlight takes a biographical angle. And I always ask this question to my guests. Where were you born and what do you remember about your early childhood? My, my. <laughs> 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 Taking me back. Yeah, born uh, in the then Naivasha district within the colonial administration. And Naivasha district covered uh, the Kinangop, current the Kinangop and uh, the, the Gilgil and uh, that, the whole of that area all the way to my Mahio. Right. Yes, that's uh, when I was born. My earliest uh, remembrance, I think, my childhood was uh, destroyed. You know, those experiences of childhood, they destroyed by two things. One, we were going through a transition from a uh, uh, squatter-based uh, settlements where you, you are, your parents and uh, your, your brothers are all employees of a Mzungu to being moved to the transit camps because at that time there was a belief that every Kikuyu had to be relocated oh, and right. be put in uh, transit camps right. before they were taken back to what they call their reserves. So um, from January 53 I think we were, we were removed from where we were uh, in uh, Naivasha um, to wherever places the the we were supposed to 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 say our our homes ancestral homes and then but you could not stay there because the the parents left more than 50 years earlier so we had now to go back and look for other settlements within to be squatters again so the idea is, is that that kind of transition that is this this organization dislocation right. uh the other one is uh, the kind of um, colonial uh, brainwashing of uh, the Mzungu versus the black man, and uh, then the struggle itself, where you 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 see a lot of things being pumped into into you to uh, the elders, so the the children uh, do not uh, do not get the opportunity to be children as such. Uh, because of the controls that were there during the time of emergency, particularly those of us who are in the then uh, settled area. Right. Interesting there, you you mentioned reserves, because um, for the longest time, eh, uh, Kenyans working in cities like Nairobi, whenever they were going back home, rural areas, they would say Nainda Reserve. So that's a colonial... It was a colonial way of uh, putting communities into cages. Uh, in the city like Nairobi, you remember that the Eastlands was uh, an area reserved for for the blacks. Eh? Right. Now, uh, you'll get the reserve, uh, reserves in uh, Kiambu, and those areas which were outside the, the White Highlands, the ones which were not settled, those were reserved for the blacks. We had even another one. Uh, you came to learn much, much later. The certain districts were there, closed districts, Kajado, Naro, Keio Marakwet. You would not go there if you are from uh, another community like the Kikuyu. Why? Because you are you you are expected to pollute them. So they were all closed districts, closed administration districts by law, put in place in order to put those particular communities in those cages. Certain laws were, were, were put in place. Certain taxations were imposed to certain communities in order to control them in a certain way. 
and uh, that's how the you have heard of uh, the British system of divide mm-hmm. and rule. It was it was real, a logical that time uh, was uh, wholly uh, foreign. The blacks were being represented, say, by the clergy, clergy, and the clergy are Mzungus. So the 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 earliest experience is where you you now come to see um, the the communities who are not the, at the same uh, level. You've heard this song, Turukua number one, Sasa number one, Sisi number one. Some of those early memories, you just see them. And a combination of uh, the white settler, the clergy was also white, clergyman, the church that is, then the, the administrator, combining efforts, to put the natives where they belong and psychologically make them feel inferior and very loyal workers of Her Majesty's or His Majesty's government. Right. So those are the kind of things. So that when I say um, inferior, I was an employee myself even before I went to start at one. In fact, I worked for three years before I went to start at one. You employed by? By, by Amzungu. Right. And all my brothers... My, me being the last one, it means all the others were employees and I had also to join the same queue. How many were you? We were six. Right. Mm. In these circumstances, you said you are, you are an employee even before you went to class the school one. because at that right. time uh, they did not expect uh, natives to go through the, R, the three hours. Uh, and uh, for instance, by 1960, 59-60, Nyandara when it was being created. The three it, R's being? The reading, writing. All right. <laughs> yes. right. And now, the um, you, you I said once you know how to read the Bible, once you know how to record milk, uh, kilos, amzungu, and so forth, that was where they were. Basic for your information, right. we did not have an intermediate school. Intermediate school in the whole district before, I think, 1959. Why intermediate? Intermediate. It is standard five. That is intermediate. And that's why if you look back, you'll get that uh, the f- second lot of intermediate is after the first Kenyatta Day celebrations, 1959, where there was that mass action, famous mass action, where the because of uh, that time, it was uh, the, 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 the two fingers. Kenyatta na Uhuru, Kenyatta na Uhuru, later to be Uhuru na Kazi. Um, the, the, that mass action where they said they are not going to use any taxi, there's a bus, uh, they are not going to smoke or drink or do any other thing which is uh, for pressure on that particular day when Kenyatta was put so that they now um, have Muzungu releasing uh, Jomo Kenya. That's the time it was very obvious that that independence must be must be accorded to the country. That that was very 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 obvious. Therefore, but, mm-hmm. uh, you will note therefore that in the district like Nyandaro, you're still asking about my earlier years. Uh, we did not have a, a single secondary school at independence. In fact, even 19, 1964, we did not have a single one. In Nyandaro district. Yes, it had now to the leaders, and I grace them. They decided, uh, no, we must have a secondary school. And that's how uh, the first secondary school was started in Nyandarwa on a Harambe basis. And they said that particular year, no child from that district will go to any other school apart from that is in order to, to greet and we did not have a single secondary school apart from uh, uh, until the following year. Right. So in these circumstances, um, I do believe you did uh, manage to acquire some education uh, that eventually landed you in the provincial administration, right? Yes. Right. Yes, it's true. Um, um, one of my older brothers decided that I must stop working. I and, and I really, really am grateful for him. That's how I, I, I stopped working for the Mzungu and went to, at the height of emergency, and went to to school. 
adding up with again in the same secondary school. We, we started the first uh, intermediate school, a school called Bongo, uh, but later the, the, it was decided that all schools continue to start at the seven or eight, and then started it that time, and then started uh, on on the high school, same secondary school again, the first one in the in the in that particular county now, and the University of Nairobi. Right. And initially. Um, Initially, where I was enrolled was in the ministry of in in the, in the department of um, BA education option, meaning that you can be a teacher, you can be uh, something else. My intention was uh, to be a physical planner, right? But the opportunities were not there, mm-hmm. so the second option, other than teaching, was uh, to join the, the the institution of the provincial administration. Remember, uh, these things which happen when you are in high school. They have an impact uh, in uh, to you in life as a head boy. As a head boy, that's a, that's a lot of exposure to administration. So I, I uh, uh, joining administration, I had quite a bit of a taste on that line of head boy. Mm-hmm. Head boys who at that time had uh, a lot of uh, well, power, power, it. power. Friends, I had a whistle. And if if I if the headmaster decided that the school must go to parade, the head boy's whistle will go, and everybody malimu, everybody stops teaching, everybody even Saturday a whistle alone, when everybody is washing, it means everybody goes to parade and they all would would go there, because if you are late, uh, the punishment is there by the the prefect on duty, so th- I I, <laughs> I got a bit of that uh, taste uh, when I was uh, in high school. So this, for you, was a natural direction to take. Yeah, it, it, yeah, yes, uh, yes, 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 yes. That although I did not do any course on on government, uh, it was uh, quite uh, interesting for me. Uh, but I'm I'm a person who, of an average brain, I think, but I do I work very hard, and I re- I read a lot, and I put it on a professional line. Uh, as soon as I joined, you 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 do read relevant material, material yes. that has to oh, do with oh yes, oh yes, your line well, of work. That, that's what that time when I was young, I did a lot of, of reading. Now I read a lot of uh, general subjects, and uh, I hope I will not be addicted to the internet <laughs> because it has so much, <laughs> right. so much information. Right. Let's let's talk about um, the early provincial administration as we know it, and uh, what what we have currently, right? I'm, I'm actually reading a book by Jeremiah Kerene. Mm-hmm. You know him, mm-hmm. former mm-hmm. head of civil service. Mm. And this is how the, he describes the, uh, in one chapter, he describes the civil service, mm-hmm. uh, the, the, the provincial administration rather, mm-hmm. not the civil service, mm-hmm. as we knew it, mm-hmm. because he did rise through provincial administration and then later mm-hmm. the civil service. He's mm-hmm. actually one of the pioneers of the mm-hmm. civil service. Mm-hmm. He says um, that the DC would sit in in the front so that the, the DO could communicate. In this instance, the DO was driving the DC, right? It was vital that the DOs be knowledgeable about each locale within their administrative jurisdiction. For example, if the DC noticed a respectable progressive chamber or farm were on these rounds, he would make inquiries and the DO would be obliged to have all the answers on his fingertips. Questions might include topics concerning the crops, the name of the <laughs> farmer, <laughs> or, uh, the, or for that matter, the schools, the head teachers, or focus on any particular theme that would cut the DC's interest. On rare occasions, they might walk in order to examine uh, particular points of interest. And finally, it says the district commissioner was the key person in the district. He had to know his district and his people thoroughly. He was responsible for the socio-economic well-being of the inhabitants. He made proposals as far as his district was concerned in regard to what he thought could be done in whether in health, agriculture, security, or whatever field. So the provincial administration from uh, Mr. Kirene's uh, description had quite a grip on the community the provincial administration as, as we knew it. From your experience, what do you see lacking currently when you compare those two? <laughs> it's very interesting that there has been a lot of transformation. You remember during his time, they had the uh, GPT, GPT. Uh, col- collecting uh, graduate personal right. taxation. That was tax. They were, they were doing all those kind of jobs. 
during my time we reached a level where during the induction we tell uh, during the induction the KIA you tell the administrator how to succeed and how to fail in the in, in the provincial administration and um, the success and failure of an administ- a good administrator would be determined by the command he has of information about their area of jurisdiction their source of information qualitative and quantitative so that particular officer had to be properly informed you would know the citizens in a lot of details even during the recruitment of a chief one of uh, the criteria is that is he successful as a leader of his family is he a leader in agriculture in his has he been elected by the people in other, like uh, if he is uh, the chairman of that cattle dip the right. chairman of that school uh, uh, how are how is he respected by his wife or wives? Are his children well controlled? So you see that particular person is therefore a leader. And therefore you get the whole information that you require because it, the, the respectability of the whole government, uh, it falls all the way to the village, the assigned chief's uh, area called sublocation, the location, then that deal. The deal on arrival he, he, you see him taking a lot of interest and he will know big people who come from that area he will know the poorest of the poor and what is ailing them and it cascades upwards to the level of uh, the province on arrival for instance you go to a province you are, you are getting a brief from the provincial medical officer of health one question you would ask him our budget on health what is it on like in Nyanza, I would be told it is waterborne. Yes. Waterborne diseases. In Nairobi, is upper respiratory system. Diseases of environment and food. Pollution. <laughs> and, and so forth. Right. You would be able, so that by that time, you start getting the command of what is happening. You look at uh, the, the main organizational things. If you see a lot of cases pending in court, that is a source of insecurity. If you see that people are very well organized, the women groups, you see society and companies and so forth, you know that is a good area. That is a good. But the minute you find that even the spiritual organizations are disorganized, then you know you are going to have a lot of problems in that particular area. How do you compare it with uh, here now? We have unfortunately, we decided uh, through the constitution that the people were being recommended by the civil societies to get rid of the institutional provincial administration. Incidentally, nearly three quarters of the world is administered through provincial administration. Whether you're in Japan, or you're in Canada, or you're in South Africa, or you're in India. Regions. It's very, very important. So that you have that, it's called French prefectorial system. It was perfected by the French. Whereby you have a prefect so that all, all issues, they fall in one if it's in a location uh, and there's a disturbance then you get the chief or in a division the DO or in a province the PC so that like things like the security that you are getting preoccupying us if uh, the provincial commissioners were empowered and they have all these teams they would be able to coordinate the f- uh, to stop the fight to interdict before that problem Coming from that community, going to the another community, they interdicted because they can get all the force. Remember, the government, like God, has the power of revenge. So they are, they are able to stop that. What did happen uh, after that? You remember uh, a decision was taken, I think, in a hasty manner that uh, you you get rid of uh, the institution of provincial administration. Yeah, actually, it says that the you, you known the provincial administration be, shall be reformed, yes. conform with the, with the constitution exactly. within five years. Yes, but which, well, which is they, where we are. I yeah, think, right but you now. know what happened mm-hmm. is that they took a decision of the first year in such a terrible hurry without even assessment. In fact, the one who decided that uh, we start now getting rid of the provincial commissioner does not have the vaguest idea of what that institution was. It does not. Because th- there is something called the morning call-up. 
where uh, a PC will call the DCs. How was it? Uh, yesterday it was like this. Uh, here we had this uh, kind of trouble. We are having plans uh, because of that. Thing. And if it continues like this, we need family relief. You know, you see that kind of thing. And uh, these people are angry because of this. The demonstration is against this and this. The country becomes harmonized. That morning call up from all, and then somebody summarizes it. This is uh, within our security team or level at the province, or this from district. The PC does not need to know, or the DO does, does the DO, the DC does not need uh, that information because we have handled it. He only knows we have taken action in the following. Right now, everything goes to the center, and going to the center means, therefore, pressure to the presidency and pressure to the minister. But I thought the, you know, the wisdom behind scrapping the provincial administration was to, and this is what actually we were told, was to replace it with elected and accountable leadership. And that's why we have devolution. That's why we have um, governors. We have county assemblies and the governor, just like the president at the national level, at that microscopic level, also has his cabinet, the county executive. Those are the people who are supposed to do all those things that you just enumerated about the specific county. Of course, cascading it downwards from the governor to the county assembly, the MCAs are, are of course, uh, the member of county assemblies are expected to be in touch with with their areas of jurisdiction and i guess the idea was to make it what more accountable more people driven as it were as opposed to the provincial administration which you served in and which was considered we were told colonial and beholden to the executive that is the presidency and not accountable to the people would you agree let's start uh, <laughs> with colonial the language I'm talking to you is colonial. Yes, English. The yes. biggest colonial, colonial legacy yeah. is the Republic of Kenya. <laughs> Do you agree? Colonial. The biggest legacy is that we have the Republic of Kenya. The language, the way you dress, the way we talk, the way we administer ourselves. Even our boundaries. Even our boundaries, they are all colonial. So that is a hot air on a political level where you, you 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 remove a system which is working replace it with a vacuum is very dangerous let's look at uh, the example now as we are talking the contemporary one of Opokot quarreling with Turkana yes. quarreling with the yes. Saburu quarreling with the Baringo you mean that governor can now refer the four it is the reason why a president goes to write a manifesto and say this is the way we will, we will serve you down there. What system does the president have? The system he has is a government of officers who are down there. If they hand over to the governor, the governor will go to his political cocoon, political agenda, political manifesto. What country do you have? You destroy the country. The weakness now we have is that uh, we weakened and removed the province without a replacement. We therefore created a vacuum. And therefore, what about the counties? Yeah, the, the whole country. And we ended up now putting a lot of pressure on the center. So you'll hear the Yusak, uh, Yusak uh, Kemayo. But even when you bring a uh, general uh, Kaiseri, or, 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 or also, or Boynet. also be, uh, Boynet. The same problem is there because you need to re reestablish that institution so that the, the delegation can be done correctly so that you stop the, the aspect of the so much centralized system where you have a span of control in management of 47. It has never worked anywhere. Is not going to work in Kenya, and the next government, if it is that is not model, it's not corrected now. The next government, I'm not saying whose government it will be, it will have to, to make that correction. We, we advise you that if you continue undermining the role of the chief, the role of uh, the, the, the regional coordinator, you are eating the intestines of peace 
end development in the country. You know, and it's dangerous. You know, Mr. Kagudi, w- w- what you're saying sounds a bit contradictory because you're saying mm. there's too much centralization. There's so much pressure on the center. That's what you're saying. But then you see, this is what we are told sought to be corrected with a new model that there was too much concentration of power, resources, and what have you at the center. And that is what the new constitution sought to disperse, sought to devolve by creating 47 counties, by creating uh, uh, positions of governors and uh, members of county assemblies, and therefore easing the pressure on the center. But now what you're saying is that that very pressure that sought to be eased has actually accumulated at the center. You know, let's praise God. God is good, 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 good. <laughs> that we rejected the so-called Heshbagai constitution of bombers. The bombers. The mob- bombers Where draft. Where they had created the locational assembly and the district assembly like uh, the one you have for the county and the national assembly and the senate and without anybody calculating the cost would have been taxed through the nose you make the country a political animal then you ignored that the national government has a parliament of the senate and national assembly and therefore the president is elected directly by the citizen to deliver certain products, services, certain goods, yes. services to them. And the constitution gave the national government 35 functions and gave each county 14 functions. What happened is that the coordination of the functions of the national government at the county it, 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 the, the, instead of reforming a dash schedule 4 section 17 that you in five years reform the, the former system it, the, not the former PC or DC the former system either to called provincial administration to conform they made that law the National Government Coordination Act and uh, the the county government called uh, county government act, and where there are disputes between the two, they they had the reconciliation that uh, act, harmonization eh? act. But the national government was in a terrible hurry. It it, it did what they called the reform. They have not reformed it, and we are late because by twenty seventh of uh, August, the five years will end. We have not as yet addressed that issue. We continue, therefore, you get there's an attack in Lamu. You get uh, the, the minister and the AG, they go camp there for three, four days. Very, very dangerous approach because all the security services, they start now protecting the AG and they confuse them. Instead of empowering the regional coordinator to handle it, with the, because they are able to command the neighboring counties, can we get the following kind of strength to go and handle that? Next on Spotlight. There is no way you can get a thousand boys going to raid without the blessings of elders, traditionally. You say that a member of parliament did not understand that? If you miss part or all of this program, catch a repeat on Thursday night at half past nine. You can also listen on our Facebook page where you can also leave a comment. Keep the conversation going via Twitter at KBC English. The hashtag is Spotlight Kaguthi. Send us a text starting with the word Spotlight to the number 22162. My name is Geoffrey Mungai. Goodbye. Mungai, 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 goodbye.